Hi, everyone. Can I please remind you to state your name and Ali before asking a question? Vika, can you tell us about your match tonight? Um, long match. Um, I thought that uh, the most important I would say today was my fight um, that I can be really proud of. Um, you know, analyzing game, um, there was a lot of probably things that I could have maybe do a little bit better. But overall, she was playing really uh, incredible in the first set. Um, not giving me much to to do, so I was just trying to find opportunity, find actually create opportunity for me to to get back into the match, to take a little bit more control in the match, and uh, really fight for every ball. Okay, first question for Chris. Hi, it's it's Chris Cleary with the New York Times, Victoria. Hi. Hi. Um, you talked earlier in the week about the importance of being brave in big moments. I think you said it was fearless, but brave was the word. Do you think you were brave tonight? And what were sort of the key brave points if you were? I mean, have you seen how I saved that break point at 6-5? I mean, can you be more brave than that? <laughs> I was thinking in my head, I'm going to use one drop shot, and I chose the perfect timing. So I think based on that point, I think it answers your question. Okay. Next question for Courtney. Hi, Vika. Um, congratulations, Courtney Nguyen, WT Insider. Um, it struck me while I was out there hearing the crowd roar on your match point and how you were kind of taking it in. Wait, that... you here? Yeah, this is the Indian Wells press room. Oh, I mean, you could have just come up, come here and say hello in person. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Theoretically, hopefully, hopefully soon. Hopefully yes. soon. <laughs> but, uh, but it struck me just hearing the adulation, you know, last fall, obviously in the Cincinnati and New York, just um, having those results and having them be fanless, uh, not yeah. getting fans to see what you were doing. Mm -hmm. How, how did that feel tonight to, to hear the roar of the crowd, to get this result, to play such a kind of quintessentially Vika match in a lot of ways with respect to the fight? Um, yeah. and yeah, have that interaction with a crowd in. Well, well, definitely. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, the, the crowd is the only motivation when you play, as you said, like last year we were without fans and I still was able to, to bring that fight and that energy, but it does take a little bit extra. Uh, I think the crowd does help, uh, to kind of get you fired up. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that we actually have fans now because it's it's been such a weird year. Somewhere you have fans, somewhere you don't have fans, somewhere there are more strict rules, somewhere there are uh, uh, less strict rules. So I'm just really looking forward how we can organize our house, um, you know, with 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 the WTA, with ATP, so we can have a, a better uh, experience with fans hopefully next year. Um, and more open tournaments. That's what I'm really looking forward to. But the crowd tonight was great. This this whole week, they've been super supportive, making me feel like really, really special out there uh, with a lot of people behind me. So that was, that was awesome. Next question for Chris Otto. Hi, Vika. It's Chris Otto with Tennis Now. Congrats on a great win. Thank you. You talked about your fight as being the main reason you were able to get that victory. And um, I think it's the first time you've come back from a set down this season. I'm just wondering how difficult is that to be down a set and a break against somebody who's playing as well as Yelena was to be able to stay positive in that situation? And um, did you, do you think you were able to do it tonight maybe better than you have all season? Um, well, definitely. I think that, you know, my, my season has been tricky. There were parts where I physically couldn't necessarily bring that, you know, extra level, extra fight, which was very, you know, very frustrating. And then there are parts where I felt that I was looking for something to add and I didn't necessarily know what it was. So it was a lot of searching in, in the season and a lot of uh, kind of kind of stepping into unknown. And I feel like right now I'm a bit more settled with a bit more structure, a little bit more discipline, which makes it not necessarily easier, but a, a bit clearer what I need to do. And so it doesn't take extra energy to um, 
on that so I can kind of focus my energy more on the fighting for every ball. So I think that overall, um, I would say that it's it's a not a great season, but it was a lot of learning experience for me. Um, so I think that from that standpoint, I, I can be pretty positive with that. Next question for Craig Gabriel. Vika, it's Craig Gabriel here at Indian Wells. Um, if you look ahead, obviously at this point, you don't know who you're going to play in the final, but if you could first preview tour, uh, if you were to play Badosa and then separately, totally, if you could preview um, about playing uh, on Strabur. Well, I think both of the players um, fully deserve to play in that semifinal and either one has worked, I think, really, really hard this season. You can see how much improvement both of those players um, done throughout the year. Uh, and we are, I think we are all, you know, Australian open quarantine, <laughs> the 14 day hard quarantine uh, group. Uh, but uh, I've never played against Paola. I've never really practiced against her. So that would be something, you know, uh, a, new, a new challenge for me to even understand her ball, her pace will be definitely a bit of adaptation there. And uh, if it's going to be on, uh, she's my dream player to play in, in the final. I'm such a huge fan of her. I think she's amazing. The, the history that she's making in the part of the world where sports are not necessarily that accessible. I just can't wait to see how far she can go uh, further. And I'll have, it will be my honor to play her in the final. Uh, and obviously, she's an incredible player. The improvement that she has done throughout, I wouldn't necessarily only talk this year, last couple of years to really step up her game, improve her fitness level. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I mean, I'm I'm just fangirling here completely. Do, do you think there's any advantage for you with the final, considering that you've played two singles finals at this tournament before? Um. I don't, I don't necessarily look at it that way because every match is about writing your uh, different story. None of the years are the same. Um, different day, different conditions can be. So I, I don't necessarily think of that. I think it's, it's more about how you're able to handle the moment that is, that is going to be there. Next question for David. Hi, Vika. This is David of Akion Tennis Magazine. Uh, we were looking at the, the stats and, and we saw that you hit 15 winners. She hit 45. Mm -hmm. uh, you won. Um, is there any other player against whom this is possible? Is the question, I guess. Um, I mean, statistics are not necessarily that accurate because Sometimes statistics can show that the, a, a player has won more points, but the other one won the match. So I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell the whole story about statistics, as well as you cannot sometimes tell the whole story about the match if you haven't watched by the score. So, you know, that's, that's really up to whoever is going to uh, take that, because if you, take, if you can make a lot of winners, you take a lot of risk. Uh, you can make also a lot of errors. So being able to um, sus uh, like resist that pressure, I think that's that's sort of a skill. But looking at the statistics, I don't know. I'm not uh, always convinced that they are pretty accurate of the outcome. Okay. Next question for Pam. Hey, Vika, Pam Shriver covering the tournament for Tennis Channel. Just mm -hmm. thinking about um, some hard court finals you've played in the past, your two Australian Open finals that you won in straight sets, your two previous finals here in the last nine years that you won in straight sets. What's the mindset been like to win those big championships in straight sets, and how does that compare to your mindset this year? Well, at, I would say every tournament is very different when you play <laughs> Your first Grand Slam uh, final, it's completely different than when you're defending it, even though it's the same occasion. But the way you approach, there's different pressure, there's different 
uh, emotions as well. So um, this match, um, this match's finals here were also different opponents. So it's, you know, I think it's, as I said before, it's always a, a different story. And now with, with tennis being a bit unpredictable because the depth of women's game is so, uh, so, so deep, um, I always take one match at a time. And I think that's, that's always worked for me, honestly, before. And, and now more than ever, I think it's even more important. Thanks and well done tonight. Thank you. Karen? Hi, Vika. Again, great, great way to turn it around tonight. Um, you've gone through a bit of a, I don't want to say adverse, but a year of maybe some challenges with the quarantines and, you know, some, some maybe dips in your, you know, really pull it out like you did tonight. But sometimes when you have those challenges, and particularly with the quarantine period where probably you had to be it where you infection come out of that experience you think that are helping you now the quarantine experience definitely is not helping in no way there is no possible way that quarantine yeah. <laughs> in any way has helped me it only okay. was really damaging there is no other okay. way to put it it was uh damaging mentally uh the end of it it was damaging physically the most for me um, I've never stopped for two two weeks not doing anything yeah. being off the air. So in no way that was that was that was helpful. Um, I will say that everything after that, how I approached was a learning experience. You know, it was okay, mm -hmm. am I gonna dwell on that or am i going to try to figure out and it took a t it took time it took a lot of patience uh, you know i felt at some point i was really discouraged uh but mm -hmm. i'm i'm type of person who will never give up no matter the situation is so um i always knew I, i'm gonna you know keep fighting but that sometimes you know it just it doesn't feel good it doesn't you're not motivated to keep searching but it's it's up to you either you're gonna you know define that moment is gonna define you or you're gonna take that into your own hands so mm. from that standpoint i think i've been pretty consistent you know climbing myself out of challenging situations and uh and moving forward thank you good luck thank you and last question for courtney Hey, Vika, you mentioned, um, you know, obviously the physical struggles that you had this year, and there are also instances where, um, you know, you did, you didn't close out matches that you probably thought you should have, uh, mm -hmm. things like that, close out leads. And tonight, it felt like both of those things kind of flipped. I mean, you, it was an incredibly physical match from you. You said out there, you had to run like a rabbit. And then obviously, Ostapenko started coming back in that last one, you saved mm -hmm. three break points in the final game to close it out. Does that make this win even more satisfying that, you know, almost all the things that kind of derailed you, not all the things, but certain things that derailed you this year, um, that, yeah, you flipped them on on on, on their head tonight to, to make a pretty darn big final? I think the, the good part and the dangerous part is to judge that but because I have won, um, like moving forward and just base that on the result. And I think the the more important for me really today is to to assess like have I done the things that I wanted to do and did they help me to win so as long as I can kind of analyze that and and the reason why I couldn't maybe close those matches is because I was focusing on maybe winning rather than what I have to do and I think that that change is something that is really important so winning or not winning is sometimes a very um you know, like high or low emotion. So I try to kind of focus more on what I can actually do. And I think that works much better. It's, it's, it makes me play, it makes me feel much more consistent. Thanks everyone. Thank you.